What I want to do is I want to start uh, tonight with a simple story um, to engage you in a bit of moral thinking. And here's how the story will start. So can I have the next uh, image on the slide? So in this story, um, we have two crucial uh, people. We have an uncle, next, uh, his nephew. Now, in this family, the nephew stands first in line with respect to receiving the family wealth. And the family is very wealthy. The uncle does not like this and decides that he does not want the nephew to survive. Now the story is going to change in two different directions. In the first direction, while the uncle is babysitting for the nephew, he goes upstairs, next, and he drowns the nephew. Now, this is not good, this is illegal. Uh, the uncle did something bad, um, and we want to hold him uh, responsible for those actions. He killed his nephew. Okay. Now let's imagine a slightly different scenario where the uncle has the intention to kill the nephew, take him out of the family inheritance, goes upstairs to where the nephew is taking a bath, the nephew has turned upside down, next, and he simply allows the nephew to drown. So you should be seeing now on the screen uh, an image of the uncle, the nephew, and allowing him to drown. The crucial distinction here between these stories is between the act of drowning as opposed to the omission of an action which is to save the nephew or allowing the drown. So we have a crucial distinction, as the title of this slide says, between an action on the one hand and an omission on the other. Now crucially in these two stories, the uncle's intention is the same in both cases, to do away with the nephew. In both cases, the nephew ends in the same way, dead. In a court of law, we want to hold the uncle responsible in both cases. In particular, when the uncle allowed the baby, the nephew, to drown, he could have saved the nephew at no cost. So not saving the nephew is a real liability. And yet, if you look at medical boards throughout the world, next, what you find is that countries typically forbid active euthanasia, giving somebody an overdose, but legally support passive euthanasia, or the omission of life support. So here we have legally a distinction where actions are blocked, but the omission of an action is supported. The question I want you to hold on to for tonight is, what is the intuition that drives this kind of moral judgment? Should the difference between an action and an omission carry any moral significance. It seems to have moral significance in the law as argued for in the case of euthanasia. It seems to have no moral significance in the case of the uncle and the nephew. So part of what we'll do tonight is navigate in this world of moral psychology, try to understand what are the psychological forces that drive our moral judgments. Next, please. Just so that I'm really clear, I want to leave you right now with three take-home messages so that where I'm going will be absolutely clear. Next. The first point is that I'll argue tonight that we are endowed with a moral faculty or capacity that evolves to generate intuitive judgments of right and wrong. Now, crucially, this claim and all the claims that will follow tonight are about judgments in contrast to what people actually do. This is a very important distinction to hold on to tonight because there may well be a science of what people do. I'm going to tell you about what we've learned about the science of judgments. Next. This is important as indicated by a recent event that happened in, in New York of a man who was standing with his two daughters next to a subway station, next to a subway line, all of a sudden, a man fell onto the tracks in the subway. The man who was watching this left his two daughters, leaped on top of the man on the tracks, reoriented him just in time for the subway train to run over both men. Neither were injured. Now, if I were to ask you in the audience, how many of you would have jumped onto the track? My guess is very few of you would have. This is an unusual event. It's very hard to explain. We could also ask, what is it permissible 
for this man to jump on the track? Yes, most people would say. Would it be obligatory for him to jump? Most people would say no. So the crucial point here is the distinction between judgments on the one hand and behavior on the other.